Professor Sid Morris, the author of the online book Topology Without Tears, which can be found on the web at www.topologywithouttears.net. This is the third in a series of videos which supplement that online book. The first two videos are now available on YouTube and they can be most easily found by going to that website www.topologywithouttears.net and following the link. I'm currently writing Appendix 6 of Topology Without Tears. That appendix is on filters and nets. In this recording I will introduce the topic of nets. Nets were introduced in 1922 by the American mathematicians Eliakim Hastings Moore and Herman Lyle Smith as a quite natural generalization of sequences. In order to avoid the countability restriction inherent in the notion of a sequence. What I mean by this will become clear in the discussion that follows. Before I begin, it might be useful for you to get a pen and paper so you can jot down things you want to remember. So let us begin. Let us consider the real Euclidean line denoted by R. One of the first things you learn about functions is to recognize when a function f mapping R into itself is continuous. We know that if f represents a polynomial such as f of x equals x squared or f of x equals 2x cubed plus 5 then f is continuous. We probably learnt to determine whether f is continuous by seeing if you can draw the graph of f without lifting your pen from the paper. All polynomials represent continuous functions from R into R. An example of a function of R into itself which is not continuous is f of x equals 0 when x is a negative number and f of x equals 1 when x is a non-negative number. Of course f fails to be continuous at x equals 0. This is because as x gets closer and closer to 0 from below f of x equals 0. But as x gets closer and closer to 0 from above f of x equals 1. In other words the limit on the left at x equals 0 does not equal the limit on the right. Another way of expressing this is as follows. The function f is continuous at the point a in R if for every sequence of numbers getting closer and closer to the point a f of x gets closer and closer to the point f of a. In other words, if the sequence of real numbers xn converges to a, then the sequence of numbers f of xn converges to f of a. So a function f of r into itself is continuous if and only if for each point a in r xn converges to a implies f of xn converges to f of a. Let me repeat that. A function f of r into itself is continuous if and only if for each point a in r xn converges to a implies f of xn converges to f of a. So continuity of functions from r into itself can be expressed entirely in terms of convergence of sequences. Now R is just an example of a metric space and continuity in metric spaces can also be described 
in terms of sequences. Let x d1 and y d2 be metric spaces and f a function mapping x into y. Then f is continuous if and only if for each point A in X and each sequence XN converging to A in XD1, F of XN converges to F of A in YD2. So once again, continuity can be described in terms of convergent sequences. But we can go much further and describe the topology of a metric space using convergent sequences. Let XD be any metric space and C a subset of X. Under what conditions is C a closed set in the metric space XD? The answer is simple and is nice. So we have XD a metric space and C a subset of X. Let Cn be a sequence of points, each of which lies in the set C, and assume that this sequence converges to a point A in X. The point A may or may not be in the set C. If for every such sequence Cn of points in C, Cn converges to A, implies A is in C, then C is a closed set. In short, a set C in a metric space Xd is a closed set if and only if Every convergent sequence of points in C converges to a point of C. An example may help. Consider x equals r again, and let C be the open interval 0, 1. Now consider the sequence of points 1 on n as n equals 1, 2, 3, and so on. These points are all in C and converge to the point 0, which is not in the set C, since C is the open interval 0, 1. So C is not a closed set. Let us repeat what we know in a metric space about convergent sequences. 1. Let xd1 and yd2 be metric spaces, and f a function of x into y. The function f is continuous if and only if for each point a in x and each sequence xn converging to a in xd1, the sequence f of xn converges to f of a in yd2. 2. A set C in the metric space xd is a closed set if and only if every convergent sequence of points in C converges to a point of C. But there are more nice observations. Let XD be a metric space. Then it is a compact space if and only if every sequence of points in X has a subsequence which converges to a point in X. So it is not true that in a compact metric space every sequence converges. But it is true that every sequence has a subsequence which does converge. For example, consider x the closed interval minus 1 to plus 1 with the Euclidean metric. We know that this space is compact metric. 
Now consider the sequence a half, one, a third, one, a quarter, one, a fifth, one, etc. This sequence clearly does not converge. But its subsequence, a half, a third, a quarter, a fifth, etc., does indeed converge to the number zero. So now we have four nice facts about sequences in metric spaces. 1. Let xd1 and yd2 be metric spaces, and f a function of x into y. The function f is continuous if and only if for each point a in x and each sequence xn converging to a in xd1 the sequence f of xn converges to f of a. 2. A set C in a metric space xd is a closed set if and only if every convergent sequence of points in C converges to a point of C. 3. Since open sets are just the complements of closed sets. We have that the convergence sequences in a metric space determine the topology of that metric space. 4. Let XD be a metric space. Then it is compact if and only if every sequence of points in X has a subsequence which converges. Having seen the beauty and power of convergent sequences in the Euclidean space R and in general metric spaces, we turn to general topological spaces. But now we find that convergent sequences do not suffice. None of our four beautiful results carries over to general topological spaces. Our introduction to nets is continued in video 3b.